Last time on Vampire. Make yourself known. Newborn, you reek of guilt and pointless compassion. Hi there. Shed your skin. Forget your old, weaker self. What do you want from me? Well, then. You look like you could rip me in half. Prove of lone wolves who bring unwanted eyes to our pastures. This time on Vampire. Hello everybody, my name is Mathis, and welcome back to some more Vampire. Things are going well here in Vampire land. Okay. Rare species of vampires. Alright, hold up. As a scholar and exegete, exegete of ancestral writings, I would ins never insist enough about the importance of taking legends and ancient folklores into account when searching for hints about hidden or lost secrets. A common mistake is to take what we know for an established truth and use it to discard any contradictory material. For example, we must consider the possibility of undiscovered species of vampires and the necessity to rethink what we see as the established truth about the various types of immortals based on what we know and what we gathered through time. For how many centuries did we consider that vampire was the vernacular term for what we had learned to call econ? Until the day four explorers of the Brotherhood found proof in Siberia that Volkhods were a lupine type of vampire, we considered these creatures to be linked to the mythological werewolf. Now we know it is not true. What about the rest? What about the Rakash, uh, Rak Rakshasa from my homeland? What about the Chinese Jiangxi? Jiangxi? Or the Pushin of southern Chile. And without even leaving the beautiful Great Britain, what about the stories about bat-shaped women sometimes seen flying around St. James Church in Luth? Or Louth? I'm not sure how you say it. What about the creature only identified as a disaster in some obscure testimonies, which tried to destroy London in 1666 by spreading plague all around the city? What about the Nimrod? The mythical figure of the restless vampire hunter, sometimes described by ancestral British econs as legendary huntsman who only feeds on his prey's blood and could go unnoticed among the mortals and immortals. I tell you, my brothers, we never can be too sure of what we can find. If only we could forget for a few minutes what we're supposed to already know. From Unveiling the Night by Usher Talltree, Primate of St. Paul. I'm curious in this world if there is such a thing as werewolves or if every mythological creature is a branch from the same immortal tree, as they've talked about a little bit in the game. How I am a branch, this, this particular type of vampire that I am, an econ, is a branch from that immortal tree and all mytholo mythological creatures are branches from that same plant. Uh, that's kind of a cool idea. I like that a lot. There's a lot in this game that I actually really like when it comes to lore. Letter to Rakesh Shanada. Dear Dr. Swansea, I'll be glad to manage the temporary morgue as soon as it's opened. As I have already told you, I was a doctor during the war and I will be glad to serve my country once again. I know it's not the same thing as being a physician for the dead as it is for the living, but I believe it is important to welcome and take good care of the departed too. Rest assured I will do my best to fully perform this new duty to the best of my ability. Concerning the question of my qualifications, I'm sorry I can't give you anything more valuable than my parole. I swear to you that my regiment made me a doctor during the war and that I saved many lives. If my word is not enough, you can contact the military administration to verify my experience and skills. They will confirm that even if I never followed any medical studies, the war taught me what a doctor really needs to know. That's interesting. Yeah, we need to go talk to him about if he's actually a doctor. How bizarre. All right, we also have some people who still need to be healed, which we can take care of, I think, in this episode as well. And then we can head to the East End, or maybe take care of uh, maybe some side quests in Whitechapel. I'm not entirely sure yet. We're not, we know where Rakesh is, but there are other people who need to be treated right now. The difficulty is just finding them. Huh? Did someone shout for help? Alright, Dr. Waverly Ackroyd needs uh, some meds. We can definitely go to him at least. I damn swear I heard somebody say, please somebody help! Alright, and we got fatigue over here as well. Two fatiguers. I'm quite busy, right? Yeah, of course you are. Do you need. Don't be. Then you are lucky that I have taken the time to do so. I wish this hospital could have... Alright, let's see if he's got anything I need to know. Alright. Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Why do you wish to lead the surgery? Is your rivalry blinding you? 
And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. I mean, that's good. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Um, it's a conservative point of view, sir. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. Do we not have a- does he not have a choice? Himself to choose how he gets operated on? Do you think Dr. Strickland has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself? His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner, yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. There's too, there's too many we are doctors, not X jokes in this game, I'm just saying. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. Okay. Thank you. Good enough. All right, Harvey Fiddick, we need to talk to you. I would like to talk to you. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Uh, yes, technically, but first... Is there anything... Really? Why is no one else out? All right, here's your medicine. Unfortunately, you are not the only person who needs help. And complaining about it won't do you any good. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Reed. I'm sure if me missus was still alive, she wouldn't be happy with me going on like this. Please, tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital. I heard Miss Jones call for help from her bedroom. There were some loud noises, like people fighting. All of a sudden, it went quiet. And then the nurse started screaming. Do you know who the nurse was? Not sure, but I think it was Nurse Hawkins. All right, we can make that work. Goodbye. All right, is this Fiddick or uh, oh, the doctor's gone? Never mind. <laughs> now there was somebody who still needed a, a headache cure, I think. Somebody in desperate need of one. I believe. We do need to talk to Rakesh as well, so we can do that. Wrong way, but you know what? We can take a look. Ooh, ooh, we got a fatigue. Ooh, and there's somebody there. Beatrice Goswick, huh? And I can just watch from behind the tent, which we should do. All right, Miss Beatrice Goswick, let's go. Right outside the window. How can I be sure I'll not find your unconscious body in the house again? I promise you, you'll not find my unconscious body. God's sake, how can you say such a thing? How can you refuse to listen? I tried to warn you for so long. No, I won't let my only son die. You promised me you'll stay alive. Your son lied to you, like the whole world lies to us. What is going on with him? I, I'm very, very curious what the hell is happening with him. The whole world lied to us. Clay Cox, Lady Ashbury. We've already talked to her. All right, let's uh, let's go talk to Rakesh. Uh, I'm gonna keep the vamp vision on just in case I come across Headache Man. All right, run through. Thomas Elwood. Nobody. 
I just, I want to cure everybody. I don't want, I, I, I'm sad that the freaking Pembroke Hospital went from like healthy back only down to stable, which is still good, don't get me wrong, but it's not where I want it to be. All right, Rakesh, we have to talk. Mr. I'm a doctor. The dead seem peaceful. The dead Good seem peaceful. Tell me the truth about your appointment as a medic during the war, Rakesh. The regiment administration appointed me by mistake. I had to learn the job on the spot, sir. Very hard, sir. But I rose to the challenge. You should have refused or you can't impersonate a doctor. You can't impersonate a doctor. You can't improvise a medical education. People could die at your hands. You're absolutely right, sir. But as a field surgeon, it was more like being a butcher. Do you believe you have really helped these people? My ratings were within the averages of the regiment. I saved lives, Dr. Reed. Does that not say enough about triage and war surgery? Do you realize how many soldiers died because of that decision? You should have refused. Yes, sir. I swear I did, sir. But no one listened. When the first wounded arrived, I had to do what I could. It is an unbelievable story, Mr. Chidana. It was a time beyond belief, Dr. Reed. But I'm happy not to deal with the wounded. I prefer caring for the dead now. Well, we learned a little bit more. Can you tell me anything about we- Oh, goodness me. This whole story is such a shame, sir. I have no idea how it happened. What are you talking about? Poor, poor Miss Jones. Her body is missing. Someone stole it. Her, the, her body is missing? Miss Jones's body has gone missing. Yes. The body was brought here this morning. And now it's gone. Who could have stolen a corpse? That's exactly what I asked myself for the whole day. Who could do such a thing? These are terrible and shameful times, Dr. Reed. Interesting. Goodbye. So the body is missing, and it's not in the morgue. We checked. I'm very curious where it could have gone. For now, let's uh, heal up our, our friend. Good evening, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you Do you know? Despite what you... Well, at least... Okay, there you go. Your son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Oh, okay. If Mortimer could be thrown in jail. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences, Mrs. Goswick. But don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. Fair. I mean, I, I, can, I can feel for you there. I've read your son's medical report, Beatrice. It's not the flu or anything life-threatening. What has you so I already know worried? what has our worried. He was at death's door when he was brought here. I just want him to be better as soon as possible. He's not out of the woods yet, you know. He might need to stay here longer than expected. Take care of him then, Dr. Reed. People here only seem to focus on contagious patients. I worry my poor Mortimer will be neglected. Okay. What can you tell me? It's a disgrace. How on earth can patients be attacked in their own rooms? Great, glad, Goodbye. thank you for that. Hey, buddy, we should talk. Good evening, Mitch. I'm okay. We should talk. Admit it, Mortimer. Your mother had you hospitalized here because you tried to kill yourself. Yes, it's true. All right, then. This is the first time we've really shared information about your case. Shall we call this progress? Call it what you want, Dr. Reed. Can I help you in any way, Mr. Goswick? I wrote a letter for my mother. She was supposed to read it after... after my death. But... I suppose she doesn't have to read it now. I see. And is this letter still near the place where you tried to take your own life? Yes. And I don't want anyone reading my last words. I mean, I'm still here. 
If you bring me back that letter, then perhaps we'll talk. Sure. We can go to that. We'll definitely take care of that. You can trust me. I won't report you to the authorities. My one and only concern is your health. I guess I should thank you then. Okay. Your medical report says you're not affected by the Spanish flu. What do you think of that, Mortimer? Does it make me happy? Not in the slightest. If it was up to me, I would have left this place long ago. I know I don't belong here. And why do you think you don't belong here? I know the staff have more important things to do than look after me. There's plenty of patients here who need their attention. All right, fair enough. What can you tell me about the... Re I had shouting coming from the first floor. I was asleep when it started. All right. I have to go. The, the body's missing. We definitely want to kind of hunt that down, uh, clearly. But we also need to go take care of this key thing. So why don't we go to his house? Recovering, 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 recovering. Still need to find Oswald Thatcher. Recovering, 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 recovering. It's just Oswald Thatcher that we're looking for now. That's fine. Let's, uh track this and uh, head that way. Oswald Thatcher, I don't know where he is or even really who he is. Like the name's a little familiar. I mean, obviously we've talked what to him. What on earth happened here? Okay, this is the room where it went down. Nothing. Nothing that I can figure out anyway. Maybe we, we should play again. We should we should ask around. Good evening. I need blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you need blood. Is there anything? You Many things can happen under cover of night, Doctor Reed. But I took no part in this massacre. But did you see or hear anything? I can't say I did. But the smell of fresh blood almost made me faint, Doctor. Okay. I'll leave you. Mistress of the dark. All right, let's uh let's swing out and grab his uh suicide note. Some very macabre themes, but fair enough. There's always help, and if I can help him, I will. Damn it! So it's like right here. It seems the Prewin are redoubling their patrols in the district. I must be more careful. All right. Well. How about I just say, eat an ulti, buddy. No, meanie. He has to, he had to go. I had to ignore this guy for my own sake. There we go. All right. This is where we need to be. Oh, it's a hideout now. So where he tried to kill himself is now a place we can call our own. Hmm. I wonder, all right, let's grab it. Dear mother, when you find this letter, I'll be gone. I want you to know that I don't leave because of you. I leave this world because of the crushing weight that existence puts upon me. These times are too much for me. Sometimes I feel like Baudelaire's verses have been written as an echo from my own heart. When the low, heavy sky weighs like a lid upon the spirit aching for light, and all the wide horizon's line is hid by a black day sadder than any night. It's as beautiful as it is painful, Mother. I can't suffer it anymore. I don't want you to try and convince me, and it would only delay the inevitable. For I would do it again, if by any chance you managed to save me once. Farewell, your son Mortimer. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. Interesting. Fertile. Vampires create their foul progeny with blood. We all know that. Some of us witnessed the, witnessed the process, even. But what is really going on there? Is it the only way for a vampire to breed? Let's review what we know so far. When willing to create a progeny, a vampire will not bite, but give its blood to drink. Most of the victims die when bitten, but some of them survive and turn into leeches themselves. This only happens when they have assimilated the vampire blood one way or another. It is not the predator's bite, but its blood that infects the victim who will turn if he or she survives the suffering of the metamorphosis. 
It also seems that a vampire can breed by having intercourse. The vampire mates to produce a child. Sexual intercourse between vampire and human rarely produce any birth, but some of them tried anyway. A vampire gestation is only a few weeks short, and the pain is almost unbearable for the mother. If she is mortal, she will not survive the birth. The vampire comes out of her womb by tearing apart her entrails. If the mother is a blood drinker, it will probably survive and regenerate. The newborn vampire will quickly grow and turn into an adult vampire only a few months. That's fucking weird. That is some, some weird ass lore. It's locked. All right, so we got another freaking safe in here that I can't unlock. Keep out. We've got some Pruin down there again. And then our way out. Can I pop this? Oh, we should actually, oh, we can't go down there. Never mind. We'll pop this door open so we can just leave. Foul Borge. We don't need to go in here. Not yet, anyway. It's good, it's good to have it unlocked, but let's go back. I think I'm going to give him the letter to him. I think? I'd rather talk to him and gain his trust. So, that's the goal. <laughs> Ooh, I can feel a sneeze coming. But when, it, when it's on its way, I can't stop it. Where's Thatcher, ma'am? Also, yeah, did you see anybody with the body? Good evening. Good evening. What can you tell? Someone killed Miss Jones in her room. And Mr. Hampton's gone missing. Doesn't take a genius to piece it together. You don't seem shocked by any of this. Why should I be? Whoever did this must be long gone by now. And besides, he got rid of the old bag. Everybody Goodbye. is just so mad all the time. Did I ask you? Oh. I'm, oh shit. Everything dies. I'm partially responsible. Yes, and I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible. The man, the scowl, I brought him here. Jonathan, how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. But there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. Girl, you want the VD? It's a vampire dick. Hmm. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Is this a sign? The hand of God in action? Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. Okay. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was not normal looking? He was bigger than a man, huge in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you but rather outdoing his master's bidding. Stop looking at me, lady. What is Ascalon? Turn the camera. The Ascalon Club are the Club. most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. Sure. Have you embraced this woman like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life unless they ask. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Temptation surrounds us, rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. 
I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. All right, fair enough. Thank you, man. Um, all right, we need to go back to, uh, what's his name? I'm still not familiar with the layout of this hospital, if that isn't abundantly clear. <laughs> I'm really sorry, sir. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Who, who are you talking to? The dead man in the bed? I don't think he cares. Just saying. Maybe the second floor is where he's at? Good evening, Mr. I'm okay. I have retrieved your letter, Mr. Goswick. I can assure you that nobody read it but me. Thank you. <clears throat> this is for you, then. For your help. And for your silence. I think you should talk to your mother. It would be good for both of you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. I'll think about it. Now, please, let me be. You literally said if I brought you the letter, you would talk to me more. I've read your letter, Mortimer. You wrote about an unbearable feeling of despair while the world crumbles around you. Tell me more about it. There's nothing more to say, really. It's hurtful, it's unbearable, and I don't ask anyone to understand what I feel. Okay. The world is bleak, but maybe the pain we feel is the best compass for making it a better place. How can we repair the world, Dr. Reed, when mankind is the biggest problem? Yes, the world will be a much better place when we're gone. Yeah, but not really, like... I dis disagree with that particular... I've There's nothing... The world... How can... Alright. I have to... Good evening, sir. Maybe I can uh, make your Dr. mother talk. Good evening. Mortimer is extremely vague as to his motivations for committing suicide. Tell me more about what you know. As you say, Mortimer had no reason to die. All he said to me was that he wanted to make the world a better place. What do you think he meant by making the world a better place? Mortimer has always been a sensitive soul. He wouldn't talk to anyone for months after his father passed. It's like he carries everyone's sadness with him. Why did your son feel so useless when facing the world? I think it was more that he could only see the melancholy facets of life. He couldn't help but dwell on such things. Okay. You realize your son could try to kill himself again? He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. That I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. Uh... You're right. Your son's death was not fatal. What? And unlike many Your son's own, death was not he fatal? He is lucky to have you by his That doesn't side. make any I sense. I can't give up on him. I just can't. I have conceded many times in my life, but giving up on my son is something I am incapable of. I have read your son's suicide note. It was not an impulsive gesture, nor was it his first attempt. He threatened to kill himself a few times before, but I never thought he would dare to punish me this much. Punish you? Why? I've known for a long time he was not happy with his life, but I always hoped he cared enough to avoid making me suffer like this. That's a selfish way to look at it. Goodbye. Well, now we talk to you. Hey, how's it going again? Good evening. I'm okay. Your mother won't let you down, Mortimer. Don't you share her hope for a better future? No. I don't. Won't you even try? Do you want me to promise you I'll get better? Do you want me to tell her the same thing? I could, but it would not change anything. All right. Ugh. Man, oh man. All right. To go. Great. Glad that worked out well. 
God damn. So, actually, what we need to talk to you. Good evening. And good evening. I think we have some personal things. Did you know Dr. Aykroyd never reported your experimental research, despite the fact he doesn't agree with it? Really? I didn't suspect he knew about my work. I must confess I am surprised. Perhaps he thinks you should realize for yourself the danger of what you're doing. See how condescending he can be? My god, he can be so irritating. First of all, that's not what I was trying to get at, but okay. Can you tell me any? I'm sure it was not your fault, Dr. Reed. My fault? What? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. It's just... I heard it was you who brought the murderer inside our walls. But you couldn't know, could you? No, I couldn't, but... Goodbye. You didn't need to be like, hey, not your fault, by the way. All right, back into the streets where I belong, and we will uh, find ourselves, I think, heading towards the main quest. Clay Cox, is there anything new I can talk to you about? <laughs> what can you tell? All I know is I ain't letting anyone rip my throat out in my sleep. I found myself a nice play, Doc. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh boy. Give me your blade. I'll leap. Is he down here maybe? Maybe he's down here. I sincerely yes, there he is. Hey Oswald, let's talk. Good evening. Good evening. Uh let's go Do ahead. You need... Don't get me wrong, sir. Yeah, give you medicine. I'm certain you have your reasons. And then nothing new here. Goodbye. Okay. Everybody's cured. So next time I sleep, everybody uh, in Pembroke should go back to healthy or, yeah, beyond stable and into the green, more or less. It's kind of like babysitting a bunch of babies, which is exactly what babysitting is normally. But you know what I mean. All right. We're back here. Some dead bodies and a truck, as always. Just trying to get some blood here. Just kind of bloodletting. You know what? Fuck it. Get out of my way. Apparently you can still hit me while I'm in unmovable... We're going club. Thank you. This just gives me more. It's just not as good. Uh, the other thing is just not as good. Thank you. There we go. Still not that bad to kill. A little bit more difficult in the beginning because I was trying to mess with something different, but a new build but not too bad all right dazed skull ruin rogue this guy's just trying to get in this, this one's mine okay that was the wrong button yeah i need i need i need i need blood thank you Big guy's got to go first. Grenade! Where? Where? Oh, it was one of those. Yeah. No. Okay. Heal. Double heal. I'm just out of stamina. Thank you. Alti. Come on. Thank you. I'll drain you now. 
His his panic flailings as I am fighting him is what's causing me problems. Huh? Oh, you're still alive? Goodbye. All right. Well, for whatever reason they were trying to break into that, they can't anymore. I am the savior of that particular building. Maya, having a little snacky over there. Eat up, okay. Did you just fire at me? So annoying. Oh, God damn it. And you put my thing on cooldown if I miss. That's so annoying. God damn, man. Ooh, blood trail. And this unlocked. Limehouse docks. Doesn't say unlocked, so I imagine it was never locked. Up and down. Whoop! Nope. God damn it. Oh, God! I really need to level up my claw more. I like it a lot. And it's a great initiator. I need to put some more XP into it. I keep forgetting to. I keep putting it in other things like stamina and uh, that kind of stuff. But which is fine. Let's give myself some blood. Heal up. I think I heard a gun cock. Excuse me? Somebody needs to be rescued. Oh, I see him. You want to get me here? Get the fuck out, you crazy bastard! Come on, 19, 19. Stamina back, 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 back. Heal. Stun. Oh, or not. Now we can drain. Dude, they're, they're, I'm in the middle of fighting them right now. I'm not too concerned. Goodbye. Love that they're when the back breaks. It's awesome. Hey, how's it going? Let's talk, old man. Are you all right, sir? What are you doing in a place? Don't like don't this? mind the fact I'm that I fought sure like a superhero. I hope you realize that staying here will put your life at great risk. Ha! I'm not afraid of these guards of Prewen, or whatever these thugs call themselves. I can still kick some respect into those youngsters. I wasn't specifically referring to them, but are you really after these men? Why? They took my boy. I've had no news since he joined that crazy gang. So I decided to come and find him myself, to get some answers. I see. But as I said, your life is at risk if you stay here. And I'm not referring to the gangs either. You should leave, sir. Well, this part of town used to be nicer, let's say. Perhaps you're right. This isn't the best way to save Andrew. Goodbye, Archer. 
I'll loot the dead people for you, though. And I, yeah, I need to go. The, the quest is not too far back, but we can loot the hell out of this place first. Hello. Dear mother, whatever happens to me, I always remember that your son loves you. I know you did not always approve of the way I chose to live my life, but I won't change. I was born to, uh, and raised in this part of town. I just can't stand what is happening to my neighborhood, the, to the people we know. I recently made a terrible decision. I decided, I decided to strike back against the tyranny of a few. I know they will retaliate, but I'm ready for whatever comes. Thanks to you. I've always loved to read. Now that I'm about to take action, I can only quote Etienne de la Boissier. Boissier? They only seem tall because we're on our knees. I won't kneel anymore, mother. I intend to stand straight, whatever the cost. Goodbye, my beloved There is a name mother. engraved under the blood on the back of the case. Is there? Jack. Gillian. Maybe I should return this watch to his family. Sure, if we can find them. Still, side quests are side quests. There's also a gigantic clock just kind of hanging out. All right, you have a good one, sir. I, you should probably start moving, but you know, whatever. I don't control you. All right, Sean Hampton, where you at, dude? Sean Hampton, is that you? This might actually be him. Who are you? Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't okay. you see I'm busy here? Yeah. Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Booth Digby? Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. So you're a wet boot boy? Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. Don't think you could. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weiner says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Sure. Whatever you say, buddy. Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cunt. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Okay. Appreciate it, my Goodbye. dude. Sean Watts. So there's Edwina. We just gotta gather info? Alright. Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. Who are you? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by Clay. I'm not here to collect payment, Miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want, then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? You got stuff? Let's talk. Can I see... As long as you have... Um... Nothing good. Okay. Good evening. Hello. Uh, let's talk. 
What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things, and I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. Can I offer you? I'm fine. Okay, she's healthy. What can I'm a gang member? If you're already talked, I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. Good, give it a shot. See what happens, girl. What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards, all of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. Man, you are just all about collecting what is owed. Ooh, Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs for once. Hmm. Gross. I'll take your word for it. What Gross. is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about it. I don't hear a man talk about it either. Behind all your crude words and your attitude, I sense romance and a soft heart, Miss Cox. Romance? I have no time for such rubbish. I use Booth like I use everyone else. Well, all right. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard. But he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway. No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Doctor Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. Okay. Well, how about... I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mugged or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say. Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them. They must know something. Cool. Goodbye. Thanks, Miss Cox. Homeless and the useless, huh? Oh, what's going on over here? Mark my words. Sabrina Cavendish. These murders are the work of a vampire. Yeah, I don't know. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? No, we're back in here. A vampire hunter. Are you? Not a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. Need to catch him. A sewer dog? What's it look like? It's an old story. Well, I'd like to talk to them, but I can't right now. Gotta go back this way. Oh, there goes a little toy train. Adorable. Who are you? Talk to me. Good evening, sir. Whatever. Okay. Don't you recognize me? 
We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. Cool. Inebriation aside. Yes. Here's some Take meds. This, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted, and I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me, then? About a sad sign. Tom Watts. We've actually talked to Tom Watts. All right. Goodbye. I need to talk to these guys more, but I am out of time. So for right now, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying. If you are, let me know in the comment section below. By hitting the like button, your support means the world to me. And as always, I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.